Hello, my name is Diane Lopesiger Brayden, and I am the coordinator for the electrician and the mechatronics programs at Delta College. And I wanted to share with you what we're doing in our spring classes, in particular uh, what I'm doing in my 122 class, which is my intro to PLC class. We decided to run our program in a synchronous manner using virtual classroom. And what that is, it's similar to Zoom. So we're actually having the students meet during their normally scheduled time to have our class. And um, we also purchased Logix Pro for our students to use, which is a simulation software program that allows them to actually create programs and simulate them using their software. The reason why I did that is I wanted us to have as close to a face-to-face -face environment for our students as possible. <clears throat> so a couple weeks ago in my class, I gave my students a poll and I asked them who was a little concerned at the beginning about going online with our class this spring. And well over half the class was concerned. And I followed that up with the question, okay, who's concerned now or who has any issues now? And the whole class was unanimous that they felt very comfortable with the class and they felt like they were learning a lot and were happy with their classes. So you might see me doing my PowerPoint, you might see me using my whiteboard, or you might see me actually using components that I brought home with me from Delta that I show my students and we use them to discuss them. You're also going to see some of my students going through their labs. Um, before the labs, sometimes you'll see my lectures where the students are looking at a circuit on my PowerPoint slide and we're discussing how the circuit works with my guidance. So um, I'm, I'll share some clips with you of that, along with some clips of my students uh, working their lab assignments and showing me their labs using their simulator. I allow them to be the presenter, so that gives them the opportunity to share their screen and they can show me their lab, which I'm going to share with you. There's also some, um, every week I have designs that my students have to do. So they actually create the designs using their simulation software and then show them to me and they get to see that their circuit works right away. So I think it's been a, a very positive spring semester and I'm really happy with how the students are, are doing with the class. They seem to enjoy it very much. I was a little nervous starting out um, when I first found that we were going to be doing the class this way, but I have to tell you I'm pretty happy with how things have gone also. So I hope you enjoy the videos and thank you for watching. The truth table now says for the OR gate, if A is off and B is on, that's gonna be true. Cause remember with an OR, I only need to have one of them be true. So this one will be true also. And then finally, if they're both on, it really doesn't care as long as one of them's on. Here I have a relay coil for you and um, relays work on the principle of what starts with an E electromagnetic yeah very good electromagnetism so here's the coil there's a picture of the coil right here and if we energize this coil um, we create a magnetic field in in the coil here <laughs> I got it backwards you can't see it and when that magnetic field is created it pulls in this plunger and then converts the contacts. Um, well, I should say transitions the contacts. So a normally open contact would close and a normally closed contact would then open. Because we want to get used to talking like this because that's how how we talk in the real world. I got you. Would you, would you say uh, A and C or B and D? That's a good thought, but that one's coming up. The way you would say this one is A or B and C or D. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. I got you. Because you that either have to have A or B first, and then you have to have C or D. Oh, yeah, because it can go either way because I can yep. just cross it. Yep, very good. Okay. Yeah, AD could make a combination too. Yeah, good job, Gabe.
There you go. So that's switch two is closed and okay. switch roll one and they both work when no. they're pressed. So. Either one that you close, right? That yep. works? Okay, very good, Greg. That was the third one. Yeah, I'm gonna take a second and do the next two. Okay, very good, Greg. Anybody else ready? Anybody explain what causes the motor to go on in the top line? What do I gotta have? The low sensor switch closed. Okay, very good. And what mode am I in here? Is that a manual mode? Are you yeah, in very good. So if you're in manual mode and you have fluid, because you see in the low level, motor's going to be on, right? Very good. Yeah. Okay. Now let's look at auto. What causes the motor to come on in auto? That'll be this line. So you need the auto contact closed. Okay. You need the latch and the unlatch closed as well, as and the no, on off. On. Yeah, you gotta have the on off switch good, and you need the latch, right? Yeah. So what causes the latch coil to come on? The high sensor switch and the manual and auto. Okay, very good. So right now I just have it in the ajar location. Okay. I'll give you the light. Um, so if I hit open, it'll slowly go up. Okay. I did kind of see you can mess with this up here, the sim scan speed, and turn it up, and it does go quicker. Oh, okay, cool. But then it, it ticks forever after, because like it tries to catch up. So I don't know if you can hear it on your screen. Yeah, I can. Yep. Very cool. But, uh, but I mean, it speeds it up, but it just ticks forever. So the open. Uh, lights on, and then if I push it. And then you can stop it at any time, right? Yep, I can stop it, even though it's ticking. But mm -hmm. I can stop it, and I still get the ajar. And then if I close it all the way. Like you said, they do run the yellow, I've noticed. Okay, yeah, you sped up the times a bit. Yeah, yes. I did, just to make it quicker. Right. Yeah, pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right, very good. Good job, Thank Brad. You. Thank you.